Honorable Vice Chancellor of Dharma Sastra National Law University, Jawalpur, for gracing the validity function as a guest of honor. Professor Nagraj is known for his pioneering role to promote co curricular activities in law schools. Welcome to you, sir. The university also welcomes Mr. C.S. Lodha, managing partner, C.S. Lodha Associates, for giving his consent to be part of this event. Glad to host you in the function, sir. It is my privilege to welcome Mr. V. Siridharan, co founder of Lakshmi Kumar and Siridharan, on this occasion. Sir, the university feels elated to get your support on a regular basis. It is a matter of delight to have you amongst us as a guest of honor. Please join me in welcoming Professor MRK Prasad, National Coordinator of the International Client Consultation Competition, who has consented to be part of this celebration. On behalf of the organizing committee, let me also extend warm welcome to our beloved Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor V.C. Vivekanandan, whose accomplishments always inspire us. Let me also welcome my colleague, Professor Yogendra Srivastava, Dean Outreach, Professor Ankit, Co Secretary, Professor Rana, Secretary, and other students, organizing committee members. I also welcome all the participants, faculties, the students, and staff who have joined the variety function in virtual mode. Thank you. Over to you, Sachin. Thank you, sir, for your words of wisdom. The client counseling competition for the law students was started long back in the year 1969 by Louis M. Brown, which later on was adopted by the American Bar Association and since then has been established as a much revered international competition. This year, Hidayatullah National Law University is conducting the national rounds of the M. Brown and Forrest S. Mostyn International Client Consultation Competition in the online mode. We hereby are marking the end of this year's national round competitions. I now request Dr. Ankit Avasti, sir, Assistant Professor of Law, HNLU, and Organizing Co-Secretary of ICC 2022, to please present the report of this competition. So, Thank you, Sakshin. Uh, I am delighted and feel honored to announce that Hidayatullah National Law University, Raipur, has successfully organized the Indian National Rounds of the Louis M. Brown and Forrest S. Mostyn International Client Consultation Competition 2022. The competition was held by the online mode from March 4th to 6th, 2022, where national law schools and other law schools in India participated. It is difficult to comprehend the gratitude we feel to have been awarded the privilege to host such a prestigious event. Today, I am pleased to deliver the report of the India National Rounds of the ICC 2022 before you all. This client counseling competition for law students was established in the year 1969 by Louis M. Brown, an American attorney and pioneer in the field of preventive law. It was adopted by the American Bar Association in the year 1972, and the international competition was inaugurated in 1985. In recognition of his inspiring spirit as the creator of the competition, the international competition was named after Louis M. Brown in 1993. The inaugural ceremony of the national rounds of IEEC 2022 was held on 4th March in the August presence of Professor M.R.K. Prasad, National Coordinator of the Competition, Mr. L. Ravichandar, Senior Advocate, High Court of Telangana, and Honorable Justice G. Raghuram, former Chief Justice, High Court of Andhra Pradesh, former Chairman CSAT, and Director, National Judicial Academy, Bhopal. The preliminary round of the competition took place on the 5th March 2022 with 28 teams representing various law schools of the country participated in two preliminary rounds scheduled pre and post lunch. The competition saw participation from 28 teams comprising of 56 students, including 35 female and 21 male students representing leading universities of the country. Nine national law universities, 10 public universities and nine private universities were a part of this competition. Out of the participating teams, Students from two teams are pursuing their three year LLB program, and students of 26 teams are pursuing the five year integrated law course. Out of these, six students are in the five, are, are in the fifth year of their study. 19 students are in the fourth year of their study. 17 students are in their third year of study, and 13 students are in their second year of study. In this completion, total 28 clients have participated from Hidayatullah National Law University, which consists of 14 students from first year, seven students from second year, five students from third year, and two students from the final year. They have also competed among themselves on the parameters of language, interaction, 
intonation, gestures, and responsiveness for the smooth functioning of three-day event consists of preliminary, semi-final, and final rounds. 14 dedicated faculty coordinators and 14 student moderators have been tirelessly involved along with the faculty and the students organizing committee for the Indian National Louds of IEEE 2022. There was palpable excitement amongst the 28 participants as they came on board for day two of the completion. The completion kick started with the client interviewing and counseling session followed by a post interview and counseling stage without the presence of clients. The teams competed in two preliminary rounds and as many as 56 judges had judged the preliminary rounds. The judges of the competition ranged from noted lawyers to professional counselors who have mastered the art of counseling. Semi finals have been judged by the leading councils, advocates on records, and partners from organizations such as Shardul Amar Chand Mangaldas, CAM, Trilegal, Singhania and Company LLP, APA Law Offices, SBI General Insurance, Juper Greener uh, Energy, Data Centers Limited, the Human Conservation, Charlton Institute of Arbitrators, London, etc. The assessment of the participating teams was done on the principles of client counseling namely establishing the working atmosphere and professional approach, suggesting alternatives and allowing team to make an informed choice, etc. The top six teams which aced these parameters proceeded to the semi-finals of the competition, but NLU Delhi, IFIM Law School, Bangalore, Army Institute of Law, Mohali, Kerala Law Academy Law College, Trivendram, Vivekanand Institute of Professional Studies, and Sim Biosis Law School, Pune. The finals which were conducted today between the teams of NLU Delhi and IFIM Law School Bangalore witnessed an enthralling performance by the finalists. The final rounds judges uh, just by Professor Dr. B. Nagraj, sir, Vice Chancellor of DNLU Jabalpur, Mr. C.S. Lodha, sir, Managing Partner C.S. Lodha Associates Mumbai, and Mr. B. Sridharan, sir, Co-Founder of Lakshmi Kumaran and Sridharan. After a close competition, the winning team is going to be announced by our Honorable Chief Guest of the event and the same team will be awarded the honor of representing India in the Louis M. Brown and Forrest S. Mostan International Client Consultation Completion 2022. This year, the international completion is being hosted by the Hillary Clinton School of Law at Swansea University, Wales, which will be held remotely from April 19th to April 24th, 2022, like mm -hmm. the past two years. We wish the Hillary Clinton Law School of Law the best for hosting the international completion and extend our best wishes and congratulations to the team from all over the world that have or are going to make it to the final stage. Thank you all. Thank you, Saksh. Thank you so much, sir. This event would not have been possible without the constant support and guidance of our Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, Professor Dr. V. C. Vivekanandan. Prior to his appointment, Professor Dr. V. C. Vivekanandan, sir, served as the Dean of the School of Law at Bennett University. Before that, he also served for more than 20 years at the Nalsar University of Law, Hyderabad, as the MHRD IP Chair Professor and the Director of Proximate Education. He is also the Adjunct Professor at the University of Buffalo Business School, New York. So we are privileged to have you as a Vice Chancellor. We request you to address the gathering with your words of wisdom, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you very much, Sakshi. Good evening to all of you. So, as every program comes to the valediction, the, every vice chancellor will be a very happy person that things have gone well and things have taken shape. So, today in this valediction, we have our chief guest, Professor V. Vijay Kumar. Professor Vijay Kumar is a person who everybody took consultation in National Law School when I joined. And still, he continues to give consultation to many vice chancellors and easily the senior most vice chancellor and would have had the kind of experience and among the law schools, how to run the legal education. So his presence today is a happy occasion. In fact, I many times could not catch him on phone or in person. So one of the formula here after I thought, think is. Many of the HNLE programs, he's going to come as chief guest. And that's one way of virtually meeting him in the screen and talking. That's a good opportunity. So I would like to welcome Professor Vijay uh, on behalf of uh, in all the people here from HNLU. And then we have, uh, I think, Professor Nagraj, I would call 
a long standing comrade from you know national law school but i think he could not join but i think if he's in youtube maybe watching or he could come any time uh, you know an entry he can make and if that is the case i would like to thank professor nagraj along with professor prasad for entrusting this uh, national rounds to be done by hnlu and then the, i presume that uh, they will give the verdict how hnlu did that apart from professor nagraj we have mr v sridharan a well known firm lakshmi kumaran sridharan somewhere i read in the internet he has retired from the firm but i thought a lawyer never retires right maybe teachers do retire but lawyers never retire and then then it is but it is whether he retired technically or not lakshmi kumaran and sridharan is the brand you know which everybody knows for many decades and it was a great pleasure uh, to uh, meet him today virtually i'm sure that uh, whether he comes to raipur via bhopal or you know uh, via raipur he goes to bhopal one way or the other we do hope professor mr sridharan will be with us we have also a eminent uh, lawyer mr loda uh whom uh, yogendra said that he's agreed i felt very happy as you said that uh, law people is not uh, is not that they are putting up uh, you know a, a busy face but really really they are more hot pressed for time than any other teacher so in that context we are quite happy to have all of you today in this function as far as the subject matter of this valediction i'm pretty sure uh two of the practicing lawyers will be doing a lot and professor Vijay Kumar will also be speaking. I never practiced, so I couldn't really much talk about client counseling. But I always thought a teacher is much better than a lawyer in terms of client consultation for the simple reason the clients are nice people. When teachers deal with students and the kind of consultation we come through finally grips and do that i'm pretty sure that you know clients in the real life will be much more easy to do so this client consultation very interestingly has two facets one professionalism and another one is ethics the professionalism part as i said is uh, uh, means instead of what you call as telling is better to tell through a particular you know joke this joke is about a man flying in a hot air balloon when he realizes that he has lost his way he reduces his altitude and spots a man in a field below he lowers the balloon towards the man and shouts to him excuse me can you help me i am late to meet a friend but i don't know where i am the man standing in the field replies i am happy to help you then he said you are in a hot air balloon hovering approximately 30 feet above this field you are between 40 and 42 degrees north altitude and between 58 and 60 degrees west longitude then he stopped after a brief pause the balloon declares sir you must be a lawyer yes i am replies the man how did you know well the person in the balloon said everything you have told me i am sure is technically correct but i have no idea what to make of your information and the fact i am still lost he tells the man below responds back indeed you are lost then you must be a client why yes i am a client how did you know he says well you don't know where you are you don't know where you are going you have made a promise which you have no idea how to keep and you expect me to solve your problem the fact is you are in the exact same position you were in before we met and now it is somehow my fault this is what the some summing of what is a client and a lawyer to start with very honestly that who is lost who is going to guide what depends upon this relationship i'm pretty sure more theoretically technically people would have completed these two days would have done and our our senior lawyers will be able to add a little more value to that but only thing i wanted to tell is about the second part of ethics which is very very crucial because in a country like us where we really really have a, a kind of what i call haves and have nots they call it there is another big divide called knows and no nots that is the biggest divide in this country than haves and have nots in this knows and no nots right how do how do people meet you know how do justice system works how do lawyers work and this is very crucial integral part of 
the professionalism what we maintained in ethics. This also, I would like to conclude with a small story that it's very simple. A very eminent lawyer put his son into another top law school. When I say top law school, I naturally should say HNLU. Right? <laughs> he put his son in HNLU, and after five years of his graduation, then he comes, trumps with that, and he's the best student. He gets the chancellor's medal, and then comes, and the dad, you know, really, really blesses him. And then he said, you're joining my law firm tomorrow. Yes, young man, one simple advice. You have been in HNLU, you got your gold medal, everything, forget it. Hereafter, do what I say. Right? Forget about HNLU, you will do what I say, and then this law firm is yours. Son did not want to, you know, fight with the father because after all, it's a big law firm and all comforts and going and working with somewhere with some other lawyer. He thought, yes. Then he said after a couple of, just simply watch me what I work, how I work, what I do, don't ask questions. After a week, he left, he wanted to go abroad. He called, now I'm living abroad. First time you're going to appear in a court. This case will come. Simply tell the honorable judge that your father has gone for a consultation to London and he'll be back in a few days and he need an adjournment. And he says, the honorable judge knows how busy I am and he knows everything and he will give you an adjournment. That's it. Nothing else, he said. Then he said, Dad, where is the case file? I said, I told you, you don't need all that. You're going to be an apprentice for one year. Just do this. After a week comes from London and then he smiles and uh, greets and gives whatever he brought from London. And then he said, what happened in the court? He said, uh, his son smiled and said, Dad, sorry to tell you, I argued the case. What? He said, I argued the case and we won the case. And in fact, the Honorable Judge mentioned my name. This young guy from HNLU has done this. And it is mentioned in that. He smiled. Father gave him a terrible look and started abusing him. He said, you idiot, with this client, I managed to make you study for five years in HNLU. I thought some more time I would have got you married. And now you closed it. Right? I need to really hunt for a client. This is a casual joke I'm telling about, about lawyers, about themselves, is what the ethical point, whether clients are sometimes haplessly caught, or how do we do? This, I'm telling you, client doesn't know, only you know. You know the right advice, like we stand before a doctor, we stand before a lawyer. In fact, with the doctor, at least your grandmother can help you with some medicines. But with the lawyer and the kind of complex, I call regime complex of law today, what it is which you, me, everybody are part, is much more complex, which means the whole credibility of the whole thing is with the legal system. And this, I wouldn't, uh, you know, be telling this to much senior lawyers who are you know, what I call as who are ethical teachers who are ethical, but as I often get worried after 30 years of teaching, that I often say that the student, if you asked, you would not, I would not have been one tenth smarter as the students today they are, in terms of how they get information, how fast they do, how do they use the language, how they strategize, definitely what you call as really much, you know, something adorable. But on the other side, as a teacher, which Professor Vijay will very much concur with me, even though we might argue on many things, <laughs> but this will concur that quite often we do talk that that is a quotient which has to be, you know, be part of the foundation, which I call consultation, because we are really talking skills on one side, as well as ethics on another side, both. Thank you very much. Uh, now I leave the floor to the anchor to eagerly listening to our guest today. Thank you so much, sir, for your enthralling words. Uh, we now take the privilege of welcoming our guest of honor and judge for the final round, Professor V. Nagraj, sir, Vice Chancellor, DSNLAU, Jabalpur. Dr. Nagraj has an impeccable and long career in the teaching field for around 30 years. Earlier, he was the Vice Chancellor of National Law University, Odisha. Sir was also a research scholar at Vanderbilt Law School, USA, and Warwick University in the UK. He has contributed a lot in legal, academic, and research field. He is today present with us to share his kind words. I may please request sir to share his words of wisdom. Sir. The professor is not able to join us, no? Oh, yeah.
Professor, are we audible to you? Professor? Sakshi, we will continue. We will move to next. Yeah. I think as the organizers can speak to him to log out and log in. By the time we will move with the, the next speaker in the order. All right, we move ahead. Uh, I welcome guest of honor and judge for the final round, Mr. C.S. Lodha, managing partner C.S. Lodha and Associates, Mumbai. Mr. Chandra Singh Lodha obtained his law degree in 1972 from University of Allahabad. He topped the university for three consecutive years. After his law graduation, he joined DCM and after four years moved to Hindustan Liver Limited, a Unilever company as legal manager. He has an extensive knowledge of indirect taxation, corporate law, competition laws, etc. We take this opportunity to invite you, sir, to deliver your address, sir. Thank you, Sakshi. Professor Vivekanandan, Honorable Vice Chancellor Hidayatullah National Law University, Professor Vijay Kumar, Vice Chancellor NLIU Bhopal, Professor Nagaraj, Vice Chancellor DNLU Jabalpur, Professor Uday Shankar, Registrar HNLU Jaipur, Dr. Ankit Avasti, Professor Yogendra Srivastava, my good friend, Mr. Sridharan, distinguished professors and teachers, and future judiciary of this country, comprising of the bar and the bench of tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It is always a delight to exchange notes with the younger generation as it enables me to walk down the memory lane and recall my days when I was your age and at your career stage. It also enables me to learn from new, fresh, vibrant, and more endowed brains, as Dr. Vivekanandan pointed out, as we firmly believe that your generation is better trained better equipped and better informed. Therefore, when Professor Yogendra Srivastava contacted me, I readily agreed and thanked him for this pleasure, privilege and opportunity. Friends, the life of every lawyer moves between three independent silos, which are interconnected, each requiring a special set of skills though some skills do overlap. These silos are client consultation, chamber preparation, and court delivery. These are the three silos in which the entire life of a lawyer revolves. About four to five decades ago, law schools were preparing students only for the second silo, namely chamber preparation legal concepts, legal history, case laws, precedents, tools of legal research, all were taught with a view to make you ready for chamber preparation. There were no moot court competitions, and thus there was no training imparted for the third silo, namely court delivery. The belief was that the art of court craft will be taught to you live by your seniors at the bar. You observe them and learn the skills of court delivery during their public performance every single day. This has how to some extent been resolved by your moot court competitions, which are taking place quite frequently. However, very little attention was ever paid to the first silo, namely the client consultation. And therefore, my very special compliments to the entire organizing team, led by Professor Vivekanandan, Professor Uday Shankar, Shivas, Yogendra Srivastava, Rana Naveen Roy, and Professor Ankit Avasti, for organizing such events and laying special emphasis on this extremely important aspect of client consultation. This becomes very important 
because unlike court battles, which are fought in open and for all to see, for reasons of client confidentiality, client consultation happens behind closed doors with very restricted entry. So the chances of learning for any new entrant becomes that much more difficult. During next few minutes, what I propose to share with you are a few lessons that I learned and methods that I followed for you all to improve upon and create your own style. During my brief journey of over four decades at the bar, I have culled out seven C's, which I strongly believe should be painted on the walls of your law chamber. And these seven C's are cordiality, compassion, concentration, commitment, competence, confidence, and character. Since the time available today is rather short, I've been given about 10 minutes, I will only give a broad overarching view, though each of these deserve a special detailed treatment. Friends, it is of vital importance that an atmosphere of cordiality, empathy, and compassion is created because such an atmosphere puts every client at ease, enables him to settle down, makes him confident to open up, and convey all the facts which are necessary for a considered advice. For your effectiveness as a lawyer, it is extremely important that you have the correct facts the full facts and all the facts, both positive and negative. For you to obtain these, you have to be patient and intent listener who has to extract facts in a very smooth, subtle, delicate and friendly manner. For this, you almost conduct cross-examination of the client but without for a moment giving him the impression or the feeling that he is being cross-examined. Your demeanor has to ensure that he does not get into a shell, does not block information, and opens up to share all the facts known to him. It is vital to keep in mind that he may be under stress, uncertainty, and indecision. A specially conducive environment must be created where he gets the feeling that he has come to a competent professional who empathizes with him, is friendly, is willing to intently listen, is attentive, meticulous, structured, competent, can be regarded as a confidant in whom he can confide, and who could be trusted and is wise to advise. For conveying this, one must constantly remind oneself that a lawyer is like a trapeze artist who must do a very fine balancing act. One must be cordial and friendly without sacrificing one's professional stature. One must elicit and extract all facts without overawing him or grilling him. One must exude confidence without looking overconfident or cocky. One must avoid being too officious, but at the same time cannot be churlish or callous. These are extremely fine lines which must be constantly kept in focus. One has also to keep in mind that the facts brought by the client are generally in a scrambled manner, not chronologically arranged, and not differentiated between relevant and irrelevant. Also, the client may not be very articulate, either because of lack of articulation skills or because of his confused state of mind. Therefore, many times during the conference, he may contradict himself, giving an impression that he is lying 
but one needs to patiently scoop out the information without being judgmental. One must so train his brain that separate files are immediately created on each aspect of the case while the client is narrating the facts. And each fact goes and sits in the appropriate file in your brain. By the time one has finished the meeting, a garland of facts should be ready for you to apply the law and present the options that emerge out of the facts as stated. It is always important to remember that law is best applied only after all relevant facts are known and documents are carefully examined. While one may indicate a prima facie view, it is always necessary to do detailed legal research to fine tune the options available for advising the client. While the format of the present competition provided you only 35 minutes, I'm addressing this to all the participants and I hope they're listening. While the format that was given to you allowed you only 35 minutes, I will only add a small suggestion for your real life. If you wish to do a further research on law for a given case, and which you must, and, or if you wish to elicit more information, as some facts may not be available during the first meeting, do not hesitate to convey this to the client. And to ensure that he does not misunderstand, you should make it clear that you will not charge him for the second meeting or even the third meeting, and that it is done only with a view to further processing the facts and chiseling the various options that you have in mind. In other words, do not hesitate to give two or three meetings for the price of one, but do give a proper, detailed, considered, and thorough advice not constrained by the paucity of time. And you do remember the thoroughness of every advice is remembered for long, but no one remembers the speed with which the advice is given. You would recall the story Professor Vivekanandan just narrated towards the end. And therefore you might have noticed that while listing all the C's, I placed character at the end of the list because like an ocean embraces all rivers, character em encompasses all your traits and skills and creates your persona. It embodies your credibility, which is the most priceless asset a lawyer has. In current state of our society, you will find clients, both individual and institutional, who will insist on succeeding regardless of the means. But your professional demeanor and overall character, my friends, must clearly convey that you are in the profession to give correct legal advice. This may include advice against litigation, advice to pay up, or an advice to settle. Many of these may be against your own commercial interest as a lawyer. But by doing so, you would not only have performed a national service, but would have enhanced the prestige of the legal profession and your own. It will crown you with an image which will eventually circulate with unbelievable speed and will attract countless clients, enabling you to render quality legal service and pursue your relentless journey to the summit of excellence. The only test which you can employ to confirm that you are on the right track, friends, is the repeat visit of your clients over a period of time. That will make you clear in your mind that your consulting chamber is really painted with the seven C's about which I spoke. And we must prove that you are an HNLU student, like what Professor Vivekanandan mentioned in his story and dis disprove his father and show that ethics and morality occupy the highest space in your mental frame. Thank you very much, Professor Srivastav. Thank you very much, Professor Vivekanandan, for this great opportunity. And thank you very much for your kind attention and patience.
जय हिंद थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच सर फॉर योर वाइज वर्ड्स आई नाउ वेलकम आर गेस्ट ऑफ ऑनर एंड जज फॉर द फाइनल राउंड मिस्टर बी श्रीधरन को फाउंडर ऑफ लक्ष्मी कुमार एंड श्रीधरन Sir is a senior advocate in the Bombay High Court, and over the years of his practice, has litigated over tax matters in various judicial and quasi-judicial fora, like High Court, Customs Tribunal, and the Honorable Supreme Court. There are a number of cases litigated by him that are regarded as landmark. The expertise of Sir ranges to knowledge in economics, accountancy, as well as tax law. Sir is also considered as an authority of customs valuation. Sir, may I please request you to address the gathering, Sir? thank you i thought is easy to address the constitution with the supreme court than three vice chancellors judging you and students who just been asked to interact with clients to interact with old people like us your galaxy of vice chancellors and mr loda explained in lucid terms what are his principles there are a few points i wanted to clarify and maybe the repetition of what mr loda has pointed out never prejudge a client by his looks or his conduct or his facts you should never prejudge anything in life you should never prejudge a client sometimes you get carried away by a client who is good in his looks or not so good in his looks somebody who is flashy rich etc no nothing happens this one second as parasarans are told me you are never to ridicule a client many times we do we may be uh, you might have done an absolutely foolish thing you should tell him why on earth did you do this your job is not that he has come to you for a problem okay you have to solve it for him why he did what he only knows so never prejudge a client never ridicule a client not because he's paying you fees all of us make mistakes in life and the third and the most important thing is i have seen that there is always a reason behind what a client had done you and i may surmise and say this position is wrong in law this position is right in law but if you ask the client deep enough right you will find some reason which led to what he did i have seen assessees claiming exemption for a particular transaction and when i look at it it gives an impression as if the client has been absolutely foolish you shouldn't have claimed this exemption but when i ask him sometimes it gives a reasoning which you might have missed out in other words if you listen to the client story carefully it may solve your problem forget about his problem there may be a hint in why he did what and this has happened to me number of times where i am at a dead end if you ask the client clearly why did what there will be an answer for it so i repeat never prejudge a client never ridicule a client and many many times to listen to the client story fully and completely okay then you might find an answer which you also would not have been able to find out and that comes from experience of course like in all walks of life clients are also different types of clients some may be dominating some may be overpowering some may be simple humble etc some clients who are known for details some people who are used to giving superficial answers off the cuff answers okay you must quickly jump sum up from a client whether which top slot he will fit in and i'll also tell you the client might not have instructed you properly when you argue in the court and the court dismisses the matter everyone in the court will think the lawyer is a useless lawyer he will never realize that the background is client has not told him fully i'll give a simple example there is a young lawyer friend of mine from pune who was a competent lawyer and a sincere lawyer and uh, 
very very competent his job okay. he argued for uh, some delay in the filing of the appeal to be condoned and he was telling the court that the tax department has not communicated the order to him and the client had filed an affidavit on the score and the court was convinced that if the order has not been communicated there is no question of filing the appeal the revenue produced a letter from the client to the tax office saying yes i received this order i will pay this tax within 30 days so the letter which the client had written to the tax office the tax office his counsel produced to the court his poor lawyer did not know everyone in the court thought that the lawyer was misleading the court the truth of the matter was client didn't tell him and why the client also sometimes it may be to withhold facts from the lawyer some client might have said or there is a large organization different department deals with different departments lack of coordination within the organization is possible ultimately the court felt the lawyer had come unprepared the truth is not that therefore what i am saying is when you're dealing with a corporate client you must also realize there are some limited facts only which the particular officer will know there are facts which are not in his knowledge he may not be even aware there are other facts existing so so you must always listen to the client talk to the client judge from the client whether he's somebody who would give a superficial answer somebody who will give a detailed answer there are some clients where the bosses will be able to cooperate with you fully there are some clients the clerk in the client will be able to help you fully it all varies there are some you can trust from a period of time yes this information if it gives the details will never change it's part of our armory to judge all that the last point which i don't know loda sir will readily agree with me or not some clients can be bullying you not out of uh, any reason but that is the style of this thing and you are not there to prove a point that you are sharper than the client etc that's not the job but sometimes when he bullies you he doesn't allow you to get to the way that you want the matter so you like to know some facts the client will never allow you to go into that so it's part of your skill i use it as a tactic not to overpower the client you find out some point which really is weak in the client's armory okay before you start the meeting you be sure of it then ask the tell the client sir i'm willing to listen to you everything you proceed and tell us the way you want but at some point convenient point please answer, clarify this point and you put this point which hurts him the most at upfront not to answer to him okay but just to give a sense that you are in control of the situation as i said not to overpower the client but just to ensure that he's able to tell you the facts fully the way you want and you are in a position to dictate the terms so this is the practical hints i will give and professor vice chancellor professor gave an example of the father and son duel saying that you finished this for future source of income i was told once i don't know whether we attributed to mr daftri or it's a joke okay rich client family dispute so the matter went on for months and years in various forums ultimately they went and asked his lawyer sir now that you have argued the case so well for so many years you please tell me whom does the property really belong to does it belong to me or the other side the lawyer replied it doesn't belong to either of you it belongs to two of us with the fees you pay there's enough to wipe out your property that's a joke they said okay. then professor also said that i have retired okay as a lawyer you must say carefully worded retired from the firm because once i was appointed a senior advocate i have to resign from the firm i'm very much in the profession okay so uh, the firm continues in my name there's no difficulty on that but i am not um, legally or officially even otherwise part of the firm but continue to advise clients on that that's the only thing i would like to say okay therefore it sum up every client has a story you please listen to him carefully i have come across number of instances my junior saying sir we ask the same information client didn't tell us sir aap puchte to bata dete client it is not so it depends on the way of asking you must satisfy the client that what you are asking is relevant more importantly 
please don't use any jargons in the communication because it is possible that he understands differently, you understand differently. If you ask him, have you filed any other suit against this party? I have come across a case where I filed a beautiful writ for that party in Delhi High Court and got order also. When the revenue produced the next date of hearing, so the same party again, the same matter, filed a writ in Nagpur High Court where it did not get a stay. The court said you have suppressed facts and dismissed my petition in Delhi. I asked the client, why did you do it? He said, I also didn't know, sir. You gave me a paper to sign, I signed it. In other words, the client also did not know that he has to tell us that he has already filed a writ in Nagpur. Sometimes they may deliberately do it, sometimes they oversight they may do it. Okay. So, so therefore, don't use jargons. If you asked him, have you filed any other suit? He will say, no. Have you filed any other writ? He may mix, mix it between a suit and this. Therefore, make sure that no jargons are there because you may perceive something in your mind, he may understand differently. These are all the practical hints I will suggest. And uh, I wish all the students the very best in their endeavor. Namaskar. Thank you so much, sir, for your inspiring words. Uh, now we have amongst us the chief guest for the closing ceremony, Professor Vijay Kumar, sir. Sir has a long teaching experience which extends 40 years. Sir has also served as the registrar of National Law School of India University and vice chancellor of Tamil Nadu, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar Law University, Chennai. Sir has also administered the UNHRC chair on refugee law between April 1997 and April 2018. He was conferred the Amity Academic Excellence Award during 2011 and Best Vice Chancellor's Award by the Indian Red Cross Society during 2012. He has also published a couple of books and authored around 47 articles in national as well as international journals. He has a diverse area of specialization in the field of law. May I now invite Professor Dr. V. Vijay Kumar, sir, the Vice Chancellor, NLIU, to address the gathering, sir. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Sakshi, for that uh, brief introduction. Uh, Professor uh, Vivekanandan, the Vice Chancellor of uh, HNLU. My other colleague, uh, Dr. Nagaraj, who is not able to join, I spoke to him. I asked him to come through the mobile phone, but he still is not able to manage it. We have been colleagues at the, the National Law School together. And we are now colleagues in Madhya Pradesh, heading two different law schools. <clears throat> Mr. C.S. Lodha, managing partner, C.S. Lodha Associates, uh, Mumbai. Sri V. Sridharan, co-founder of Lakshmi Kumaran and Sridharan. My learned friend, Dr. Uday Shankar, the registrar of HNLU. Dr. Yogendra Kumar Srivastava, Professor HNLU. Dr. Ankit Avasti, the organizing uh, co secretary. And a long standing friend uh, from Goa, Dr. M.R.K. Prasad, who is also the national coordinator. Learned colleagues, participants from various uh, legal education institutions in the country, invitees. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> good evening to everyone present here. It is nice to note that there are about 28 teams that took part in this competition with 56 students. And one heartening fact, which was revealed by Dr. Ankit Avasti, was that. 35 female participants took part in this, while there were only 21 uh, male students represented at this event. What a change. When we were in the law college, we had 90% of the college filled with men and less than 10% with girls. And in events and others, you know, you will seldom see the girls coming forward. And today in the 21st century, the confidence that they have, and it is very nice to note that a phenomenal number, 35 out of 56 students are girls, and I'm very proud of you girls. Keep it up. He also made a mention about uh, the team's uh, composition. 
two teams uh, with a three year background and uh, remaining 26 teams with a five year law course. That's a phenomenal uh, number in favor of the five year law course. That's nice to hear that. Nice to note down uh, this fact. But it is equally important that to judge 56 students, there were 56 judges. See, that's very important. To judge 56 students, you have had 56 judges, if I captured that uh, statistics uh, clearly, representing div uh, different diverse background, right? And finally, allowing six teams to enter the finals, which included uh, WIPs, Symbiosis, IFIM, and NLU Delhi, so on and so forth. Now, this competition, which I uh, went through the brochure, was established uh, long back in 1969, adopted by the American Bar Association in 1972, and uh, as an international competition launched in 1985. And this competition is also affiliated to the International Bar Association and collaborates closely with law societies and bar associations throughout the world. So which means that they have an excellent network. And this year's competition is uh, done by the School of Law, Swansea University, Wales, uh, which is uh, a wonderful institution by itself. With this uh, information, I would like to seek apology from uh, Sri C.S. Lodha and uh, Mr. Sri Sridharan because I never practiced. But as Vivekanandan pointed out, you imagine a situation, right, that you being a lawyer and somebody appears before you as a client. And what are the qualities that you do expect? from such a client and how you should behave so that the entire exercise between the client and the counsel becomes much more meaningful for both of them. It is not one is a winner, the other one is a loser. If for the client counseling has to be successful, it has to be successful both for the client as well as the counsel, the lawyer. And therefore, I would consider client consultation is both an art and a science. If what I said is true, it should be both an art and a science. Art because the knack of the lawyer's ability to speak and convince the clients, gather as much as information as possible. So it is an art by itself. It is also science because it is systematic and follows scientific methods of elucidating necessary information from the clients or the parties. So you don't ask the last question first. So systematically you organize yourself. That is what I call it as scientific way of organizing things so that you get the necessary information that the lawyer should have before he gives his opinion. Now, some of the important characteristic features of client consultation that every lawyer should possess uh, I don't know whether uh, it is a strange coincidence. Uh, when I heard uh, Mr. Loda, seven C's. I also prepared seven C's. I don't know whether it is one and the same, right? And uh, But still, I thought I will uh, make a mention about these uh, seven C's, which are necessary for a lawyer in the client consultation process. And uh, if something is irrelevant, please forgive me. But this is, as I mentioned to you, a wild imagination, right? As we are meeting virtually, I was also virtually with uh, a client, and then I thought these are the qualities, right? The first and the foremost uh, quality, the first C, is the communication skill, right? Now, sometimes uh, a lawyer may speak very fast, the client may not understand. Or the lawyer may speak very slowly, right? And the client uh, is in a hurry to follow up. Then it is not going to do well for both of them. And therefore, the lawyer should have the communication skill specifically with the clients and more particularly or specifically 
in a language that he is comfortable with. We cannot impose English language over each and every client. There are clients where you can speak in English, right? And if you know another language, because we do practice in our own respective you know, states, we know the language of the state. And therefore, if it is necessary, one should have the capacity to communicate with the client in a language in which he or she is comfortable with, right? And uh, therefore, if you are dealing with a foreign client, let me tell you, if you know a little bit of uh, words or phrases in that language, it brings you together in no time, right? If you say one or two words in French, greeting each other, I think the client will be more comfortable. And therefore, communication is one among the most important skills which the lawyers uh, should possess. The second one is clear understanding. Second C, clear understanding. Clear understanding of what? Clear understanding of the issues involved and identifying those issues clearly during the consultation, making a note of it, right? You cannot store everything in your mind, so you have to record it somewhere. So therefore, there must uh, be a very clear understanding. I think uh, Sridharan was making a mention about uh, certain issues that uh, he wanted uh, to ask the client whether he has filed any other suit or, you know, anything else, where else you know, but he was not able to respond there must be a clear understanding so that whatever information you want, you must be in a position to collect that information from the client. The third one is convincing the client. Now, convincing requires a lot of, uh, you know, uh, things. I was looking at a, you know, cartoon some time ago, not now, about a few years. In one such uh, client, uh, uh, you know, I think uh, both of them said, clients are of different types. I read about a client who went and consulted uh, three, four lawyers free of cost. First consultation, free. So he consulted and, uh, you know, he is a well-informed client when he goes to the fourth lawyer, right? Or maybe the fifth lawyer. And therefore, whoever it is, whether it is the first time coming or a fourth candidate coming or fourth time that he is meeting a different lawyer, whichever lawyer is able to convince, right? So that convincing characteristic either by their address, by their communication skills, by their behavior, whatever it is, that comfort zone they have to create. The fourth one is continuation of the dialogue. The client comes not once. He comes and checks the lawyer once, goes back, comes again, I forgot certain things, I wanted to share them with you, comes for the third time. And for all these times, you know, the lawyer should have the continuation of the dialogue with that uh, client, right? So that he is able to make a final decision about uh, the implications of law and how it is to be taken. The fifth one is communication tools. I'm using this in the context of the 21st century in which we are living. It is not the communication which I said as number one. This is communication tools. Sometimes you have to use the computer, sometimes you have to use the mobile phone, video conferencing, you know, maybe WhatsApp, right? Uh, LinkedIn, there are social media platforms. One must be comfortable in using all of them so that the client and the lawyer, they come in the same page so that the things can move faster in the right direction. The sixth C stands for cool headedness, right? Sometimes the Client may behave funnily. The lawyer is expected to tolerate and maintain his cool head and then, uh, you know, complete his task, not to react to the clients, right? That's what uh, is meant, uh, meant by cool headedness. And finally, what uh, Vivekananda was saying, the ethical basis give the proper correct ad uh, advice. The last one is correct advice, right? Which brings in the ethical, uh, legal, or whatever context in which uh, we are uh, now discussing about this competition. Along with this, uh, to increase or to enhance the capability of a lawyer, I sincerely feel in the last uh, couple of decades, I've been constantly telling this about uh, uh, legal education. Something is lacking in legal education is because there is a course foundational course in psychology, 
which will go a long way for this client counseling or client uh, consultation process. This, I hope the law schools will take uh, some initiative. Some of the law schools have already introduced psychology as a, as a course. And I think if psychology is also studied, possibly it will go a long way in uh, bringing the requisite quality of a lawyer before he or she leaves the law schools. I am particularly happy to see the students of uh, law taking keen interest in such curricular activities. It is not a co-curricular activity. It is a curricular activity in my view. And therefore, it is nice to see that uh, 28 uh, teams participated. And I hope in the next competition, more and more you know, teams will uh, participate in such events. Uh, and this is very, very essential for them before they join the profession. And uh, one advice to the participants, we really, not an advice, but we envy you. I hope uh, Vivekanandan, uh, Mr. Lodha and uh, Mr. Uh, Sridharan would agree with me. When we were students, we never faced any such activity, right? Neither there is moot nor there is any code. <laughs> but there is any client nor a consultation process. And you are all lucky because you are well ahead of uh, those times. And that gives you the confidence that you require when you go and face the situation. And, uh, you know, in one of uh, the conferences, I had to speak uh, after uh, uh, late uh, P.P. Rao was addressing around 35 lawyers from the Supreme Court. Uh, it is a training of these lawyers uh, who are training themselves in uh, the field of constitutional law. So before he, before me, he spoke and said, whatever you have to learn in the court, Supreme Court or the High Court, you have to forget whatever you have studied in uh, law schools. I felt very bad. And when I get the opportunity to follow him and say something, I was very categorical in telling the audience that uh, if what he says is true, either we close down all the courts because they don't follow the law, are you closed on all the law schools because they don't teach uh, what is relevant? My sincere feeling is that all the law schools are teaching the core courses, speci specialized courses, and it is only the nuances of the practice which may differ. It is not different. It is what they're expected to learn. And I hope activities like this will bring and uh, fill that void in the present uh, legal education system in this country. And therefore, uh, I sincerely appreciate uh, the efforts taken by uh, HNLU in organizing this uh, uh, event uh, in the past uh, three days, and uh, today is the concluding day. Uh, I would also address uh, the participants. Please keep one thing in mind. Participation and learning in the process of participation is very, very important. Winning or losing is only incidentally. Sometimes you may win, sometimes you may lose, but what you learn and what you take back when you go back home is what really matters. And therefore, my congratulations to all the participants first and my compliments for the winners of various awards. Thank you very much for uh, listening to me patiently. Good evening to everyone. Thank you so much, sir, for your kind words. May I now humbly request, sir, to kindly declare the results of ICCC 2022. Right. Okay. The winner of uh, the event. No, I will not say the winner first. I'll go from behind. The runner-up of this uh, competition is TC17. IFIM Law School, Bengaluru. Congratulations to the runner-up team, TC17, IFIM Law School, Bangalore. The winner is TC03, TC03, National Law University, Delhi. My congratulations to the National Law University, Delhi. <laughs> There is still one more award. The best client award 
the best client award goes to client number 05 ananya bos congratulations ananya bos thank you thank you so much sir i now request honorable vice chancellor sir to address the winners of iccc 2022 sir vivek you are muted i am basically here to participate and join to congratulate the participants first and the runners up and the winners as uh, professor uh, announced the bangalore team which is runners up ifim law school i presume uh, the teams are listening here or logged in and their faculty are logged in uh, mr sanjay padode who is the chairperson whom i very well know for whose group i worked as a journalist you know 2 3 years was part of the dalal street journal group founder i know him well i am in touch with him in the whatsapp group so it's a pleasant thing to know and also from bengaluru which i always considered my uh, you know what you call a second best home after chennai you know and that's very nice and then national law university again another colleague of us from law school and nalsar heading it now professor krishna devrao school that's a very nice feeling and as they said that the remaining winners uh, are going to come sooner or later in other competitions and that's what the thing and so let me thank from my end about uh, the the guests of honor as well as the chief guest who came today right and i think all of them said i only remember one of my very favorite songs which i must have listened thousand times in my college days nowadays i don't find much time for songs it is by a group called simon garbunkel in 1964 it's called the sound of silence it's still available anyone who get hooked to that will never keep it down and one of the para goes like this people talking without speaking people talking without speaking people hearing without listening people writing songs that voices never share no one dared disturb the sound of silence this uh, is fantastic when you listen the song itself rather than the words and that's what was echoed everywhere about listening you know than hearing and then about you know understanding what is talking and this is the two crux of the base of client consultation which builds an effective justice delivery system thank you and i would like to thank everyone especially uh, professor prasad and professor nagraj who entrusted us to do this national rounds and uh, all the team organizers especially professor yogendra who is the dean of you know uh, outreach programs dr anket and then uh, the digital team of anita singh and then the uh, excellent coordination by the organizing committee at uh, all these testing times is certainly what you call as uh, a, a very feel good factor from a channel you thank you thank you so much sir with this we reach the last part of valedictory ceremony of iccc 2022 national rounds may i now request professor dr yogendra kumar shivastav professor of law and dean of outreach program and external affairs at hnlu to propose the formal vote of thanks he is a seasoned thank academician thank author, you sachi administrator and columnist having a vast experience in the world of legal education government sector and litigation prior to joining the hnlu raipur sir was working as dean and director faculty of law and dean student welfare at jagran lake city university bhopal sir has led two national and international research projects sir over to you thank you sachi uh, respected dignitaries on virtual dais uh, faculty members uh, my dear students and esteemed uh, participants Uh, good evening one and all it is my pleasure to propose the official vote of thanks uh, to the people who have played a major role uh, in the successful conduction of this grand event uh, but i would uh, first begin with the uh, expressing my gratitude to the distinguished dignitaries uh, who have graced uh, this occasion first and foremost uh, i would like to extend my gratitude to our chief guest Uh, professor dr v vijay kumar sir vice chancellor national law institute university bhopal uh, sir has always been a source of inspiration for all of us and personally an inspiration for me as well uh, thank you so much uh, sir for your august uh, 
uh, presence. Uh, it always makes uh, a lot of difference seeing you uh, present at our events. Uh, I express my profound gratitude to our guest of honor in absentia, Prof. Dr. V. Nagaras, Vice Chancellor, Dharam Shastra National Law University, Jabalpur. Sir, it is extremely delightful to have you with us uh, today in this valetary ceremony. Uh, my deepest gratitude is also due uh, to our guest of honor, my la long term friend and well wisher. Uh, Shri V. Shridharan sir, uh, one of the most renowned names in the legal fraternity and a genius lawyer, I can say in the field of corporate law. Thank you sir for accepting our in invitation. I record my sincere gratitude for our guest of honor and other, another, another uh, remarkable practitioner, Shri C.S. Lodha sir, managing partner C.S. Lodha and Associates, Mumbai. Uh, sir has always lent a, his valuable uh, support to us in many ways. Thank you so much, for sir, for joining us today. I express my profound gratitude to Professor Dr. V.C. Vivekanandan, sir, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Hidayat National Law University, uh, for his unwavering support and mentorship. Uh, I also take pleasure in thanking our registrar, Professor Dr. Udar Shankar, sir, uh, Dr. Rana Navneet Roy, Organizing Secretary, Dr. Ankit Avasti, Organizing Co-Secretary, and all the faculty members, digital team members, IT team members, and student uh, uh, members of the organizing committee as well. I most sincerely thank you all for your sincere efforts that made this event a grand success and put us uh, in the good books of our national uh, coordinators. It is my duty and privilege to thank the National Coordinator of the Brown and Mostyn International Client Consultation Competition, Professor M. R. K. Prasad, sir, for providing us the opportunity to host the competition and for graciously guiding us along every step of the way. My gratitude is also due to Professor Babugata Patel for his expertise and support. I extend my most uh, sincere gratitude to our team of faculty members for providing their support during the event to make it smooth and glitch free. Uh, I also thank my dear students who contributed immensely as clients. You all have played your role uh, magnificently. Uh, finally, I congratulate the participating teams and the winners and thank them with all my heart for their trust, faith and support to Hidayatullah National Law University. And without your zeal and enthusiasm, this event would not have been have witnessed such immense success. I extend my best wishes and blessings to all of you. Thank you all once again. Jai Hind. Over to you, Sakshi. With this, we mark the end of the ceremony. I thank everyone for joining in and for sharing the words of wisdom. Good evening. Thank you.